Hi everyone! In today's I See Melanie video, things are going to be a little bit different in that this video is a PSA for cycling safety. A few days ago, a very tragic accident happened in my neighborhood where a young cyclist was hit and killed by a truck. I don't know all the details of that particular situation, but that just brought the idea of creating this video to my mind because as you can see, I'm a cyclist, there's my bike right there. Um, I'm wearing a cycling tank top. I fell in love with city cycling four years ago during the pandy where I was bored, I needed exercise, and I needed to get around the city. And so I've been a cyclist ever since then. And I've seen a lot, I've experienced a lot. So I thought I'd share things with you and in hopes of you know helping you maybe make better decisions when you're riding, riding your bike, especially in the city. The first thing I suggest is probably what you're all thinking is wear that helmet. Wear your helmet. Do you know how many times I'm walking or I'm cycling and I see people around and half of them or 40% of them are not wearing helmets? I've had friends who don't wear helmets and the excuse is, you know, it messes up my hair, it gets sweaty, if I get itchy, I can't scratch it well and all those things. And all those things are true. But your head, your brain is arguably your most important organ next to your heart, but you need your brain to control your heart. I get into near misses all the time with cars who don't see me, who could potentially run me down. And falling on the cement is, you know, I don't want that to happen to me and I don't want to hurt my head. The likelihood of you getting into an incident with a car is pretty high. If you live in a city that has streetcar tracks like I do, there is a very good chance you could slip in those cracks there's a very good chance you can find yourself on the cement and you want to keep your head intact okay so wear that helmet just wear it just wear it and i know for adults you have the legal right to not wear it but don't you want to keep yourself safe yes and also you know what you can get into an accident all by yourself. I, in 2021, 2023, got into single vehicle accidents. One time for Torontonians, I was on Cherry Street before all the construction started and I needed to make a turn and I did it too fast and too sharp. And it's so funny is I always can kind of see myself getting to a bike accident before it happens. When I was like maybe a second away from the turn, I thought to myself, Melanie, girl, you're gonna fall. And I fell, okay? So I fell onto the side of the, the pathway and I fell onto a piece of dirt, you know, there's some grass there. And there was a guy who passed by, he offered to help me up. I wasn't too badly off, so, you know, I was more embarrassed than anything, but my hip did hurt for a couple of days and that was not fun. And last summer I was at a park called Tommy Thompson Park here in Toronto. So it's kind of like a little remote area that's really serene. And there are big paths for cycling, for jogging, for walking, for all that kind of stuff. But they have some pretty serious speed bumps there. And I wanted to take a video of me riding my bike. So I had one hand on my um, headset on my handlebar and I had the other hand holding my phone. I had my phone in my right hand and I was approaching the speed bump and again I thought to myself girl you're gonna fall and I fell I flew actually I flew into the side of the pathway so luckily I was very 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 lucky I fell into like the grass path and not the pavement but what happened to me the chain came off was completely mangled. Luckily it was, it was salvageable. And I know how to fix it. I've done that in the past, but I was just so like scattershot after I came up from the ground. Um, luckily there were two ladies there and they put it back on for me. I messed up the alignment of my headset. So my handlebars. So I had to ride back home in a very awkward way. It messed up the alignment of my seat, the lining of the seat, a part of it got ripped off. I got a bunch of hematomas on my calves that stayed there for weeks on end. And I got a massive gash on my leg right above my knee. The scars I still have a year later. And I hit my head. I was wearing my helmet, thankfully, but I definitely hit my head. And if I wasn't wearing my helmet, 
I would at the very least get concussed. There was a while where a lot of my coworkers were getting concussions. Like every other weekend, somebody was missing because they got a concussion. And one of my coworkers, one of my friends, he had some psychological issues afterwards. So I don't want that. I didn't want to have any issues, and I don't want to, you know, hurt myself. So. Wear your helmet. You don't know when you're gonna fall off your bike. Just wear that helmet. It, you're gonna get gross anyway. You're gonna get sweaty and nasty. Just, just wear it. Okay, just, just wear it. Another thing I see way too often are cyclists who ride their bike at nighttime with no lights. Guys, go to Amazon. Get yourself some lights. That's what I did. So I've got a headlight. I've got a, a backlight, a red light. I also have lights in the spokes of my wheels. These are all super cheap from Amazon. The headlight and the backlight, they're rechargeable via USB. The spoke lights, they take those flat um, batteries you can get from the dollar store, three for a dollar, like, and they last forever. I've never changed them. Just get some lights because people need to be able to see you because there are a lot of times when I'm riding my bike I don't see, I don't really see the person, don't see them very well. There's a, a few weeks ago, I was riding my bike again. This is for you Toronto people. I was coming back from the Humber Bridge in Etobicoke and I was along that wreck path and there was a bike approaching me and you know, I could see it because I'm always like very hyper aware I saw him, but it was in an area that had very little light and the light that was there was all covered by trees. So he wasn't very visible. And it's just like, guys, where are your lights? Get a light. The reflectors that come on your bike, they do jack. They do jack, especially if you're in an area where there's no light. What is, is it going to reflect? It's going to reflect nothing. Just get a light. You need to be able to be seen by other cyclists, pedestrians, and cars. You need to make them see you. A few years ago, that same night that I made that sharp turn, I fell on the ground. I was riding my bike back. And for Toronto people, I was on Bay Street. And there were a bunch of us stopped at the red light at Bay in Adelaide. And I saw a police car coming up slowly behind us. And I said, I know he ain't coming for me. He was coming for a guy in front of me. This guy was doing everything wrong. He had no helmet. He was on his phone, like talking like this to his ear, like no speakerphone. And he had no lights on this bike to speak of. I could hear the police officer telling him that he needs to put lights on his bike. And then I didn't hear the whole thing. I don't know if he got a ticket or whatever, because I took off. You need to have lights on your bike for dusk, dawn, dark, and for when you're riding in a tunnel or under an overpass or an underpass, I guess. You need to have your lights there to be visible. Just to get the lights, they're cheap. They're easy to maintain. Another piece of advice is please do not wear your earphones, your headphones when you're riding your bike. I see this not as often as I see the other problems, but I see it quite often. And I do not for the life of me understand how people don't want to be aware of their surroundings. I like for me as a, a woman, as somebody who walks around a lot, who lives in the city, I'm always hyper aware of my surroundings as much as, you know, as much as possible. But when you have your earphones in on the road, you can't hear sirens. You can't hear somebody in distress who might walk out on the street. And that happens a lot downtown. You just can't hear, hear things. So your senses are so dull. And it's like, and I understand because like for me, when I go on bike rides, unless I'm just running to the store, I go on a bike ride. I'm out for at least two hours and more often three, four hours. And it can get a bit boring. I get it. So this tip I have might be a little controversial to some of you. It was a little controversial to me at first, but I said, you know what, whatever, I don't care. I have a Bluetooth speaker and I put it in one of my cup holders and I play my music that way. And yes, I know that can be a little obnoxious. <laughs> I admit that, but I need to be entertained. So I'm being a little bit selfish, admittedly, because I am cycling downtown I'm just passing by tall condo buildings, stores, office towers. I'm not really interrupting anybody with my music, but if I'm in an area where people are congregating, so if I'm stopped at a red light, or it's just a really busy day, or if I do happen to be on one of those few streets that actually have like houses on them downtown, I will turn it off or turn it down really, really low. 
But again, most times I'm on a busy street and like I'll hear somebody's music blasting from their car anyway. So yeah, if I'm on Bloor Street, I'm on University, I, I do not care. But I sure as hell will not be putting my earbuds in my ear. And as a bonus, my USB speaker has a bit of light. My old one had more light, this one has a little bit. So that makes me that much more visible to drivers. And the music, especially if you're riding at you know 10 o'clock at night, it makes you that much more noticeable to drivers because they can see you, but they might even hear you before they see you. So that's how I justify doing it. And I, yeah, I try not to be too obnoxious. And truth be told, I have some off-brand speaker. I see people with their JBL speakers and I'm kind of jealous because their music is louder. So again, this might be a little controversial, a little obnoxious, a little rude, but you know, I gotta do what I gotta do. Also, get yourself a loud bell. This is your bike's horn. And the most important thing is your safety, but you also need to think about your bicycle safety as well. If you live in a city like Toronto, bike thievery is a big deal. My first bike was stolen. I borrowed my dad's bike originally because again, I was, I was new to city riding and I didn't know if I'd like it. So I just borrowed my dad's bike and I had it from middle of July to basically like September 1st. I went on a nice long bike ride. I decided to go to Michael's in the entertainment district in Toronto to get some stickers. I was at the store for at most 12 minutes. I come out to where I locked my bike up using a cable lock and I see my bike is no longer there and there's a policeman there. So apparently somebody called the police to report bike thievery, but the bandits, there were two guys, they took off with the bike. And so the policeman was there and he took a report for me, but like, if you lose your bike in the city, you're not getting it back. So I had to walk myself back home <laughs> that day. I was so pissed off and I, I was just so angry. I felt so violated and I felt bad because it wasn't my bike, it was my dad's, but he was okay with it. So yeah, if you have a nice bike, if you have a cheap bike, that bike was a Walmart bike. So it wasn't even anything special. And I had to buy a new bike. And I, cause originally I thought, you know what? I'm really comfortable with, with city driving or city biking now. I'm going to get maybe a Trek bike or something like that or a specialized bike. There's no way in hell you'd find me getting one of those fancy bikes in this city <laughs> because there are too many thieves around. So do not use a cable bike lock. Those are very, very easy to snip. When I got home that day, I went on YouTube to see, you know, how people do it. You can snip off a cable lock in less than 10 seconds. A lot of people, what the bandits do is they put it underneath their um, sleeve. So they're inconspicuous and they cut it off because like this situation, this happened on a Saturday at three o'clock in the afternoon. So it wasn't even like it was, you know, nighttime at 10 p.m. or 11 p.m. And on another side note, be careful where you park your bike. Park your bike in an area that's relatively busy, even though when you do park your bike in a busy place, it still can get stolen. I've seen that firsthand, but you know, just try your best, park it in some place that's dense, but not too dense. And uh, you know, it's, it's a risk, it's really, it's a risk. So what I have now, I got myself a kryptonite U-lock and I am still very conscientious of where I park my bike. As you can see, I park my bike in my den right now, even in my building where the parking is, there's a parking area for bikes. People would steal there too. There are thieves. There are all, there are all sorts. I see all sorts of people in my neighborhood every day. I see the ultra rich and I see the exact opposite and everything in between. And you never know who's going to steal your bike. Speaking of which, last summer, I was on Bloor Street. I was just sitting on one of the um, seats there on the phone, and I heard a bunch of commotion. And I looked over, and there was somebody who was stealing somebody's uh, e-scooter. And this person had a U-lock or a chain. He had a metal lock of some sort on his scooter. But this person actually had an electrical saw and he was sawing at the lock to get it. So somebody had called the police by that time, but he was still trying at it because there was a piece of it that was still 
on the scooter that he was trying to get off. So this guy, like he dragged the scooter down some stairs along the sidewalks. The scooter was probably damaged. He ended up leaving, fleeing without it. But yeah, there, there are a lot of thieves or a lot of bad doers in the city. So just be careful. Bicycle safety is obviously very important, but the most important thing is you, your body, your head, keeping yourself safe, keeping yourself alive because cycling in the city is a very risky endeavor. I, I still do it. I've lived four years of doing it without any real consequence or bad consequence, but it is very risky. So please, as a cyclist, take those steps. And I know there are lots of a-hole drivers because I've been a victim of them. I've seen them. There are drivers who had just taunted me on the road for no reason. I remember one time I was riding down Dundas or College um, by Lansdowne and I was riding on the side of the road. It wasn't very busy. And there was a driver who was just like swerving into the area, into, into the bike lane, just to mess with us, just for fun. One time when I was riding down Bloor Street in the bike lane, a car just decided to park himself right in front of me in the bike lane. There, there are some real jerk drivers out there. But the problem is, or the thing is, as bad as they are and can be, us cyclists, we will always be on the short end of the stick. We are always way more vulnerable than they are. Our consequence could be death. Their consequence might be, you know, some time wasted and maybe a bent up bumper or something. But like, we do not want to be hurt. You want to stay alive. So yes, please, 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 please take all those steps in consideration when you're riding your bike anywhere, but in particular, when you're riding in the city. So that's all I have to say. That's my soapbox for today. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching me here on IC Melanie and make sure you subscribe, like, share all that good stuff. And I'll see you later. Bye.